Just do one thing for me. Get Medusam. Medusam! Well, that's probably the dumbest joke I've ever started a video with, and, uh... <laughs> Funnily enough, it's for my favourite stage in this game. Medusam is short and sweet. This whole video is just me beating Medusam. Uh, it is mostly, as you can see here, just solid platforming. With a really, really fun flight section at the end to reward you for all of your platforming. Um, yeah, I have very little complaints about it. It's like a really good slice of platforming just snuck its way into Scalar. The game built on beginner's traps and mimics, so... I'm actually very okay with this stage, I totally dig it. Uh, I think this is the point where I realise you can just tongue lash those guys, making them very easy to defeat. These guys on the other hand are always fuckers and I never learn a way of defeating them effectively, outside of spamming my limit break. So I just kinda throw myself at him until he stops guarding my shit. Here we go, that's the way to do it. Anyway, yeah, uh, mostly just solid platforming and uh, I think I brought this up right at the beginning, but Scalar's movement? is really good. I will say, like, if there's one thing Scalar excels at, it's the actual character movement. When he's not in one of his alternate forms, uh, Scalar's basic movement and jumping mechanics are incredibly good. Like, if the game was less almost maliciously designed at points, which it feels like it is, um, this game would actually be really solid. I'd rate this as high as, like, I don't know, Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank without the shooting. So, yeah. Tie the Tasmanian Tiger. There's a platformer on the PS2 that I kind of like. So, yeah. I say kinder. I grew up loving that game. So, yeah. Anyway, um, again, this game is very, very generous with its checkpoints. So, uh, even if I do get a little setback like that, not the end of the world. However, oh, there's me actually using the invisibility to dodge enemies. Uh, however, the game doesn't tell you where your checkpoints are. So, that still uh, incentivizes you not to just let yourself die constantly because you do not know how far you're gonna get pulled back sometimes and sometimes the game will go a fair bit without offering you a checkpoint um, these things here while easy to deal with and easy to avoid are fucking disgusting I don't know what it is about them I, do, I just look at look at this one the way they come off and they're fungal and they just float around ugh, ugh, ugh. This game loves just being casually gross like, I can't imagine there's anyone out there in the world who has ever uttered the words Scalar for the PS2 is my aesthetic. But if that person does exist, I, I don't know if I want to avoid them at all costs or just sit down and have a coffee with them. Really just pick their brains and ask, why? <laughs> what is it about this incredibly fungal video game that you, uh, that aesthetically pleases you? What exactly is it? Because, yeah, it's very good at getting across dangerous alien planet in both visual design and game design. But, you know, there's, there's almost also an element of, like, why would you want this? <laughs> why would you choose willingly to be trapped in this? Even Scalar himself doesn't like it. Like, Bobby is actively fighting to get home because this place is gross. And all places in this game are gross, even the good ones. So, yeah. Anyway, less questioning about the uh, visual design of this game. Uh, let's get back into the play-by-play -play of the gameplay. And right now, uh, the game is making me absolutely dread any wide open circular area. Because that is almost 100% going to be an arena where you have to sit and fight for your life against hordes of enemies. Some of which are purposefully designed to bap you when you're dealing with their you know, colleagues, so... This game, I will say, really likes to test your ability to crowd control almost as much as Dark Souls 2 does. Like, goddamn, this game really, uh, does love throwing hordes of enemies at you and having you figure it out. Like, where, where do you need to be? What attacks do you need to use? What attack... What, what fights are not worth fighting because you're just gonna get punched by someone else from behind? All that good shit. Anyway, uh, 
Once again, we go back to the solid platforming, which I love and is great, and I wish the more of the game was just this. I wish this game was more traditional. I wish it was more basic platforming. That area I went to just there was just uh, for pickups and crystal gems. Don't really care for those. I'm not 100%ing this. Uh, let's do some forward progression. There we go. Just a nice little elevator section. Ooh. And uh, oh, oh, it's time to get a little greedy here. So going for those. Feeling like the top of the world, thinking I'm unbeatable and dying for it. I'm going to throw my hands up and say that was on me. I forgot the fact that when you're on the platform, uh, you, it carries momentum with you. So when you jump, you stay on the platform when you land. Which I kind of like. I like that I don't have to, as soon as I'm in the air, try and manually force myself to land back on the platform that I'm on. It actually accounts for the momentum. I know a lot of games don't do that. And it bothers me. Anyway, oh Jesus. Oh, wow, just straight up donked to death. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, poor Scalar. I feel bad for you on that one. I don't feel bad for you off with Scalar, but that one, that was A on me and B painful looking. Oh, dear. Now, all of the floating enemies around here, like the jellyfish and those big fuck-off whale things, those are naturally terrifying when you see them, but they obviously can't hurt you. Uh, yet. They can't hurt you yet. Uh, but in time... In time, oh boy, do they hurt you. <laughs> do they have the means with which to hurt you if you engage them violently? But we will get to that. Um, who else we got? Oh, you. My favourite enemy, the kind where you got to sit, wait for him to use a certain move so you can start hitting him. But otherwise you just have to run away and wait for him to do the move again. That's my favourite thing when bosses are like that in games. Egg dealer, I hardly know her. Oh, hello. Hello. Are you done yet? Can you be done? Please be done. Just, come on. Come on. Oh, stop. Oh, I hate when he does this throwy thing. I don't even know what prompts him to do this over just slamming the ground, but... Lord, is it annoying to avoid. There we go. One more smack will do it. All right. Just about. Now let's go forward again. Oh, we've got more of these platforms to... Figure out. They're not too tricky. Just got to make sure you don't bean yourself oh, right into the electricity because you can't hesitate on these. All right, that was silly of me. That was on me. That's the good thing about this level. You know, it's a good level where all of the deaths that you see, I can throw my hands up and say that was on me. I screwed that up. If a game, a game to me is always like, I can tell if it's good if I'm the one who causes the deaths. <laughs> if it's my fault that I died. That's my litmus for a fair game. Anyway, this grindy section here is not too tricky, actually. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's mostly because of where the camera is. It's because it's behind me and looking forward, I can see shit coming. Which usually it doesn't do. It likes to do this three-quarter angle where things just get flung at you and you don't have time to react to them. So, yeah, I'd rather it not do that. I like it more when I can see from behind. That's one thing Sonic's grinding does well. Gives you a good, far-ahead view of what you're dealing with. Anyway. Back on the grinding again. Now, granted, I get the idea that maybe harder grinding rail sections can blindside you a little more and force you to rely on, uh, you know, quick reactions, because that is a challenge in and of itself. But when you're just casually moving around, I'd rather not have insta-kills just thrown at my feet, you know? But again, uh, Meduzum is my favourite level because it doesn't do that shit that often. These grinding parts are quite fair. In fact, I realised I just went through a whole 360 rotation. That was a big waste of my time. But um, yeah, I realised that for the most part, I got through all of this without dying. So yeah, can't say that for most other grinding sections in this game. Gave me enough look ahead to plan accordingly. Oh, piss. And if and when I do die, and I can't remember if I do, it is my fault entirely. I don't think I do. I think I just about make it. And now we've reached pretty much the end of the level. So we end here with a uh, boss who is a little janky, I will admit. Uh, it's a little hard to get to shoot his projectiles back at him. And he's one of those bosses where you have to wait for him to use a certain move before you're allowed to hit him with anything. 
i.e. in this case it hit the very same move back at him. But you know what? It's not too bad because it's all you're always on edge. You're never bored because his moves hone in on you and he likes doing those big spread attacks, forcing you to really think about your positioning. Like you need to try and essentially do like a half circle around the bottom half of this arena or from wherever he is. And that is the best way to keep yourself safe. But when he does drop one of them big fiery orbs for you to throw back at him, you've then got to be in position quickly to knock it at him. So it's a little bit of a balancing act, but it's actually fun. I do not mind this boss. It's a fine boss fight. Mini boss, don't get me wrong, but it's fine. It does its job well. And one more hit to go. I know the last one's always going to be the goddamn hardest. Come on. Ah, oh, piss. Yep. The yeah, aim. It's because he sent it so far backwards. I had to aim it further. Here we go. This will be the one. And shoot. Got him. And now I can fly around this level freely. This feels great. And I'm so annoyed that this is the only level that lets you fly around. And you don't get to do that much of it. First of all, you've got to do this very simple Su Superman 64 fly through the rings BS, which, okay, it's not that bad because the flight controls are at least decent. There's, like, arguably a bit too much lift when you use your boost. It does elevate you more than it probably should, but you can account for that by aiming slightly downwards when you boost. So, you know, this is fine. Uh, I would have loved the whole level bit around this. But turning the level that I was previously on, or that I just did, into a... from a platforming playground into a flying playground is a very fun way of getting the most out of this level. Not that you get to fly that much. Again, there's only a few minutes left of this video, but the flying you do get to do, great. Why have you introduced a really good fun mechanic and then used it barely at all? What's that about, Scalar? <laughs> and this isn't the only instance of that. My other favorite power-up in this game is the only other power-up that only appears in one level. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you reusing the ones I don't care for as much? What's that about? I don't know. Maybe they were saving more of this for Scalar 2. And Scalar 2 never happened. So, yeah. <laughs> we just have to be thankful for what we have here. Anyways, by doing that Superman 64 section, we now get to uh, fly into a dark ring. Uh, this is where you can freely move around the... Uh, the entirety of Medusam. And if you want, you can start attacking the uh, local fauna. Uh, these things, when you shoot at them, send out gross fungal homing funguses at you. And everything is gross. Why is everything gross forever in this game? Please, God, stop. <laughs> oh, I wonder what actual phobias this game triggers in certain people. But it, for me, it's just a ongoing sense of discomfort anyway into the dark ring which uh it'd be nice if i could just continually boost one point of improvement i'd give this thing uh but not so much for when we're in here so i don't know what animal we're currently flying through uh but if you're one of those people who has fears of barnacles and i know that's a phobia sorry <laughs> i'm sorry I probably should have warned you, um, but the game didn't, so I guess I didn't. Uh, yeah, this section is not too bad to fly through. Like, you know, it really lets you put these flight controls to the limit. even forces you to do a hard turn at one point with the L trigger. Uh, but you do die in one hit if you touch any of those sticky-outy horrors, or if you touch any of the walls. I guess Scalar himself also has a fear of barnacles, because touch one and he's just like, nope, and insta dies. Like, he just gets electrocuted and dies, so... Yeah, um, intense. This took me a couple of whacks. Uh, I'm not going to count the first four or five attempts, because those were all done without knowing that I could do a power steer. And that's more on me for not reading the instructions that the game did give me. That was hubris. Those first five deaths were down to hubris. And then after I figured it out, I got it in. I got it after about three attempts. And granted, this is a really, really long section. So going far into it, only to die at that last turning I just did, does get frustrating, I will say. 
And then the game starts playing with the y-axis, having you go up and down and all around in order to avoid these monstrosities. And dear God, um, this is actually the furthest I'd gotten. And so at this point, I was just going in completely blind and I was freaking out. And every little thing was scaring me. And thankfully, just about made it to the end. And I'd like to say that at the end of all of it, Medusam is pretty high up there as being my favorite level. Nothing really matched this. Alright, well, sorry to see you go, Medusam. I've got less fun areas to visit now. Bye!